Uh, Dr. Carmona is, I mean, I, I, I really don't think I need to introduce him. Everybody knows him, but he is from uh, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, and he is the director of Neurotological Institute at uh, uh, yeah, Neuroscience Institute in Buenos Aires. He is the um, uh, the president of FINO, and uh, uh, we will have an honor to have him again speak, and it is always a pleasure to work with him to put, him, put this thing together. Sergio, please. Thank you, Steve. Well, <clears throat> be relaxed because this presentation is not about ocular movements. It will be about the present and future of the study of the vestibulospinal pathway. I will concentrate only on perception, some uh, relationship with oculomotor system and posture. Of course, vestibular spinal has a, an important autonomic function. And lately we discovered that vestibular spinal pathway also has a, a very important role in the muscle tone. Well, just is to remind you that the perceptual function is ascending, the ocular motor function is ascending, and the pastoral function is descending, and the main vestibular spinal tracts, the lateral, the medial, the ipsilateral vestibulothalamic, and the crossed vestibulothalamic tract. This is to highlight where the <clears throat> most important- Sergio, we are not seeing, we, uh, we are not seeing yet your presentation. Screen. What happened? Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Can you see my... It's, it's happened also with you, okay. <laughs> it happened all the time. We are tired. Now, now it's okay, it's okay. Good. Okay. Well, the, the main tracks, lateral, medial, ipsilateral, and cruised, vestibular thalamic tract. Here we had the the location of the main vestibular tracts, the lateral and the medial. You know, the medial has homo and contralateral innervation of alpha and gamma motor neurons and lateral ipsilateral innervation of alpha, gamma and inter neurons throughout the entire spinal cord. So if, you, if we put in a, in, a, <clears throat> in, a, in synthesis, the result of the lesion is you have the lesion in the lateral vestibular spinal tract, you had pulsion, we had the proprioception spurred, you don't have ocular signs and the subjective visual vertical is VB is spurred. We know less about the effect of the lesion in the medial vestibular spinal tract. Uh, we only know that the proprioception is part, but probably we have oculomotors and some alteration in this VB. The autolytic pathway produce pulsion and head tilt, spur proprioception, always ocular signs, and impairment of the ECBB, Ipsi, or contralateral. The typical clinical picture is the OTR, which is a triad of cephalic tilt, skew deviation, and counter roll of the eye that can be peripheral or after the acusation in the medial longitudinal fasciculus central. Here you have the location of the lesion. And here we have a clinical case. 
Presentamos el caso clínico de esta Sorry, the audio is in Spanish, but you can see here the nystagmus of the patient to the left. De la mirada que se va a acentuar cuando lleva los ojos a derecha. We can see the skew. Vemos el nystagmus. Again, the nystagmus, unidireccional nystagmus. Hacia la izquierda, un nystagmus de características vestibulares indicando una lesión del laberinto derecho. Se aprecia aquí Here también can see el cephalic tilt cefálico hacia la derecha and the pulse. y la desviación congruente hacia la derecha. So, in synthesis, you have the cephalic tilt and the skew, and if you take the subjective visual vertical or have the fundus photography, you can see the counter rolling of the eye. Talking about the dorsal spinocerebral tract, here we have the, the view of the cerebellum and the way of this tract. It produces a pulsion ipsilateral impairment of the proprioception, appendicular ataxia, no ocular signs, but we still don't know if they are not uh, subject to visual vertical impairment. This is a, a case. Here you have the location of the track and the lesion in this case and the patient has an ipsilateral pulsion. As neurologists, you know very well the effect of the lesion in the parieto insular cortex and in the thalamus. Here you got the location into the brain. And when you have the lesion there, <clears throat> you have the pusher a very well-known neurological syndrome. The ipsilateral vestibular thalamic tract don't produce pulsion. The proprioception is at part. There are not ocular signs, but there is impairment in SBB ipsilateral. If the lesion is a thalamus, you know the pusher, sensitive impairment, ocular signs, and impairment of the subjective visual vertical. If the lesion is in the parieto insular vestibular cortex, again, you can have pusher, sensitive impairment, but not ocular signs, and impairment mainly controversial of the <clears throat> subjective visual vertical. So usually the situation is this, when the lesion is in the cortex, the patient don't have OTR, but impairment of the SVB. Here you got a typical case of pusher. But when you concentrate in explore the vestibular spinal pathway in, in any single patient, you can see patient like this. This uh, old lady can't do work clicking because imbalance, and the only sign in the exam is this lateral pulsion. And you can see the lesion controversial in this case. You know that you can use <coughs> vestibular spinal pathway to check the grade of ataxia, and it's very useful when the ataxia is a high grade, two, three, or three, to differentiate with the high uh, sensitivity, central from peripheral cases in acute vestibular syndrome. And the sensitivity is also very high when you add nystagmus and 
mainly when you check patients with ICA syndromes. But let me tell you about activation protocols because all these lesions are a tonic imbalance. I would like to show you what happens when you activate <clears throat> the vestibular system and what happens with the vestibular spinal pathway. This was a protocol designed by our friend Sumai Maya, and we call it head shaking tear suppression test. So you ask the patient to do the regular head shaking, okay. and after that, to tilt the head. Look what happens when you have a central lesion, in this case, a glioma in the cerebellum. They are not suppression after the tilt. And you can differentiate with this simple test, central for, from peripheral cases. What happened? The cerebellum regulates the signal from receptor. In this case, you're producing an autolytic signal. And in the case you had a problem in the cerebellum, they are not inhibition. We published the results with a multidisciplinary group uh, with people from Hopkins, uh, Uruguay, and Brazil. And let me show you another common situation. This is a young lady with vestibular migraine, imbalance, not vertigo after an acute um, attack. As you can see here, there are no nystagmus. The head impulse was normal. After head shaking, you can see no nystagmus when the fixation removed, but a very clear pulsion in this case, to the left. So remember that according to some papers, von Breven in 2005 and our group in 2011, that in 95% of the cases in particular migraine, you have axial ataxia. And sometimes you don't see uh, alteration in the ocular movements. Very recently, we published this paper, again with the Brazilian group, how to study the effect of vestibular activation of vestibular spinal pathways using portal posturography. We apply all these kinds of protocols, head shaking, head impulse, and tilt of the head. And uh, the measurements were made with BAP, a kind of portal posturography. This is a um, control group, and we are working now with patients with vestibular pathology. Another way to activate the vestibular spinal pathway to use the gal galvanic stimulation. In 2011, we published a paper uh, where we compare patients in vestibular rehab with and without galvanic stimulation and the results were a lot of better when you combine vestibular rehabilitation with galvanic stimulation. Now we are working with Dr. Pedro Amaro in Spain to use the portable posturography and the portable galvanic stimulation uh, for patients at home. So in conclusions, vestibular, sign, vestibular spinal signs are very useful for diagnosis especially for those who are not experts. Very simple. The diagnosis can be improved using activation strategies. Galvanic stimulation improves the results of vestibular rehabilitation. Uh, here you have recent uh, review articles about vestibular spinal pathway. And I hope that in the near future we use more Thus, exploration in our vestibular patients. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Uh, 
Thank Maybe you very much. Excellent lecture, uh, Sergio. Um, let's see. Uh, questions? Any questions? So, um, Jorge. Hi, Sergio. So that was really very nice. Uh, how about the Fukuda step test? Did you do that uh, and how it correlates? I don't, I don't believe at all in Fukuda. Uh, in the uh -huh. past, it's only, also Unter, Unterberger test. It's, yeah. a, it's a set. Uh, we, we didn't study and we, we find an, at least 50% abnormal in normal, normal people. You get a different, uh, you know, length of the legs or some problem, some orthopedic problem is is very common that the patient deviating one size or another. So, it's, in my opinion, it's not useful. For me, the more reliable test, Jorge, is the deviation of the index. You have to be sure that the patient have no contact with the surface, just uh, you know isolated in the space, and it's even more useful than Romberg because Romberg is a combination of uh, proprioception also. So with the, with the index finger, you remove the, the um, proprioception. We are working now in a protocol using uh, index, head shaking, and we recheck the index. So you probably had patient, I remember when you visit us in Ineva in Buenos Aires, I show a patient with a pure pulsion without any ocular signs. And of course, these kind of patients sometimes are vestibular also. So. Sergio, uh, Sergio, uh, Carlos hey. is here. Uh, yes. Very nice uh, presentation, but you are talking about uh, acute patients. Uh, I don't believe that uh, these signs are, are very useful in, in chronic patient, in, 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 in chronic vestibular patient. What do you think about it? Well, I have no uh, control study to answer your question. Uh, probably uh, we are using in acute patients. Yes, you're right. Uh, probably you had to add the, to add the gate and other ocular signs in chronic patients. Perhaps you can tell us your experience with that, uh, Machado Joseph ataxia. But, but it's an acute unilateral, right? Yes, yes. That's the other yes. point. I mean, uh, well, you know, vestibular spinal is just one side or another. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. not so complex than ocular movements, no, so, so sophisticated. Yeah. But no, but yes. just, just to follow in the, the, the question of Jorge, uh, I, I believe that the, the contrary, what uh, do, uh, did you say about the Fukuda test? The Fukuda test, I think that it, it's a good uh, a vestibulospinal test in, in acute cases, not in chronic for sure, but in acute cases, I, I, I find it uh, uh, useful. <laughs> I know, Jorge, but if you, if you had an acute patient, you can test them with another signs like a division of the index or Romberg. And if you do that, if you do that test, that's not any new information. But my advice is try Fukuda in normal people, and you will find a oh. lot of aggression. It's, it's a lot of false positives. So yes. it's, it's dangerous when you only use that test for vestibular spinal pathway. Okay, it, this I, I agree with you. In chronic patients, something sometimes you can see the, the Fukuda the, the positive test. A, a patient, a patient, the, the subject is turning without any really a vestibular or neurological problem. Well, you know my idea, uh, Carlos. We published paper together. I think that ocular signs are very useful, but are not used by the uh, general practitioners. So we need it in, in, in acute uh, phase to um, 
to teach some easy ways to check the vestibular system. Uh -huh. that, that I totally amazing. agree with you. 